You're playing with gravity, heat, the strain point. It's all such fun. <laughs> My name is Tim Dreyer. I'm a scientific glass blower. I work in scientific glass all day, and when I see the techniques that I'm using, I just thought to myself, this would be the coolest drinking vessel I've ever seen. Why doesn't anybody ever do that? So that's what we're doing today. We're taking borosilicate glass tubing and blowing it into barware reimagined. First, I'm gonna start by making the cups. I start with a piece of 44 millimeter tubing. I heat up a section. I close the end off. I punty up. The punty is just an attachment that's going to be removed at some point. It's made out of borosilicate rod because I want it to stick to the bubble that I want to help control. And then I blow and stretch and push and pull into the shape of the cup that I want. When I blow a cup, I'm spinning both hands roughly at the same speed in the same direction, the same lateral pressure. There's a lot that goes on when you start getting a bubble soft. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a fire cut where I'm gonna heat just a real thin band of glass, pull it, basically rip it open, and this will be the top of the cup. So now where this is tore, there's gonna be a little blip that I need to pick off of there. See it? Right there. That needs to come off there, otherwise it'll just amplify as you make the lip or the foot. Then I heat the whole lip evenly and I use my graphite paddle to push the rest of the glass back even and then my graphite rod to flare the lip even. Graphite is used in glass blowing because it can take a lot of heat and it's pretty much indestructible when it comes to flames. There you have it. I can see that it's even, it's square. And I usually pull it off on my punty handle with a small sharp flame and my tweezers. Tweezers are extension of my fingers. When I'm working, I can't touch the glass, so I use my tweezers. So now I'm just closing off the end of the tube. I'm gonna get rid of this raw end and close the end of the tube. I close off the end and I peel off what bad glass is on the end and then it seals off the tube again so it allows me to blow another bubble. I can work my way down a whole six foot length of tube that way. Borosilicate tubing is soda lime glass with boron added to it. It makes it a stronger, harder glass. In flame working, we work with a torch, so it needs to be able to go from room temperature into a 3000 degree flame, and other glasses can't do that. That's why flame working is different than furnace working. Furnace working is where they take batch glass, mix them in a big crucible, add a bunch of heat and literally melt the glass and then they go in with steel pipes and dip it out of the furnace and shape it and then put it right into an annealing oven. So now I'm gonna heat this little section and I'm gonna stretch it. If you take chopsticks and you put them in a bowl of honey and you roll it up and the thickness of the honey builds a little ball on the end, that's a lot what it feels like. You're dealing with a really thick liquid on the end of a tube or a rod. Now I'm gonna blow this up and squash it a little.
I use quite a bit of heat. 3200 degrees Fahrenheit is the actual flame temperature. The valves on the torch are the control for propane and oxygen to give different flame intensities and flame patterns. There's the focused, wide, soft flame. Like when I blow a cup, I use the outer fire to get more glass soft so I can blow a bigger bubble. And then there's a sharp pointed center fire flame. They're both roughly the same as far as heat wise. It's the volume of flame that it gives. I do not. I have a fire extinguisher. So I gotta heat up a wide section and then blow to shape the cup. When the flame is blue, it is the absolute hottest it can be because at that point you're burning two parts oxygen to one part gas. The sodium that's in the glass is what's burning off. That's the bright yellow you see. It's called a sodium flare. So the glass is actually giving some of its life away. Overworking the glass can cause devitrification because you burn all of the sodium out. So you want to try to work the glass as little as possible so that you maintain the integrity and the chemical properties in the glass that you need to keep it clear. So now on this one, I'm gonna put a flatter bottom here. So I'm going to a sharper fire and heat up just this bottom section and push a square shoulder. While I'm working, I wear didymium glasses. They're made out of a material called neodididium and they filter out the sodium wavelength in the flame, which is the bright yellow. And it allows me to see into the wall thickness of the glass when I'm heating it. I wear a Kevlar sleeve on my right arm to protect me from the heat. If you have long sleeves on, cotton could potentially catch on fire. So I try not to catch myself on fire. Things have gotten kind of cool down here on the end, so I want to make sure that I'm not letting them get stone cold. It's a technique called flame annealing. I wanted to warm everything back up roughly the same temperature to help it equalize. I'm going to go to a fire cut, another fire cut, and I go to an overhand rotation instead of an underhand because I'm pulling. When I'm just blowing a bubble, I prefer the underhand technique because I feel I'm in more control of the rotation. When I do the fire cut, I need to keep things even plain. I have a lot more control in that respect when I'm overhand. The glass gets soft at around 1100, 1200 degrees, and you gotta be careful because you can boil the glass where the surface of the glass will literally start to boil. You're getting it so hot. So that's why the even rotation of the glass is important to get the even heat all the way around. If I was to just stand still, the glass would boil in that spot where the torch was hitting it and it would fall to the ground. Right where the heat hits the tubing is the hottest. So when I come out of the flame, you'll see me just let it rotate. I'm letting the heat equalize. Because it'll have a hot spot and if I start blowing right away, it'll blow out of round and blow uneven. So you need to give the heat time to equalize in the tubing and then you blow very slowly and that's the key to blowing a good cup.
all three cups are complete. Next, I'm going to make a foot for each one of my cups. I make a foot by closing off the end, attaching my punty or my handle, and then I blow a small squatty bubble. A squatty bubble is a bubble that's just basically compressed to oblong shape. Do a fire cut. I use the graphite rods and my graphite paddle to flare my foot to the flatness that I want. Sometimes the foot has an uneven edge to it. Sometimes I go down on my graphite block and it helps even that out. So it makes it so the cup isn't going to be rocky. And then I just pull it off the punty. Next, we're gonna wrap some coils. I'm using a smaller diameter tubing and I'm wrapping it around a graphite mandrel to give me the shape and size that I want. You're feeding your tubing in over the top of the mandrel and everything comes together. It is almost magical because the tubing is just soft enough, cools enough when it touches the mandrel and it just happens all by itself. The graphite expands probably two to three times farther than the glass does. So as it cools, it's gonna shrink twice as much it will shrink down and allow the glass to slide off. And now for the fun part, we're going to assemble the coil, the foot, and the cup all together. I've sketched out what I want the cups to look like, but this is where the tricky parts start. I'm cutting the coils to give me sections of workable size. I cut the coils using a tungsten carbide blade, a really hard metal, so it scratches the glass and with pressure on the back side causes the glass to break in an even way. So now I'm just pulling a hole in the ring because I need to be able to blow this together when I seal these ends off. And I take my piece of six millimeter and I seal that temporary blow pipe. And then where I scratch cut it, it has carbide in there. It'll leave a dirty spot in the clear glass. So I peel that little piece off. Then I heat the whole thing, soften it, so I can go on my graphite and flatten it flat. So now I need to pick these edges together carefully, stitch it up. The hand torch is extremely portable. It's a very condensed, small flame. I use the hand torch for small seals doing uh, very concentrated, small work. Okay, so that one I'm gonna put on there like that. So I'll bend it just a little bit. So now I need to do the same thing with this one. So I have a pair. Ready to put this one together. The plural stopper is just a big stopper and I use it as a holder with a handle so I can put my cups on it and hold them in the flame and still be able to blow. I use a small hand torch to heat just a very small piece of the glass. I blow a blister, it looks like a blister, and then I pop that open and then I'm ready to seal on any kind of sidearm or connection. I'm still blowing while I'm attaching things. 
so they don't constrict close. Because when you seal the glass together and heat it, it wants to gather onto itself or constrict. And the air pressure inside allows me to blow and flow that wall thickness even from where I've made my attachment. I have to keep the cups and the feet and the coil and everything above 490 degrees, which is the strain point. If you fall below that is when things can crack. So once I warm things up and get everything hot, I need to stay there while I'm doing my seals. My favorite part is the assembly. No, it is. I get in a trance and I can feel the way the wall thickness. I can't explain it. I love every part of the assembly process. And I'm kind of that guy who's pushing all the boundaries where I don't really care what people think or whether it's even practical or whether you can ever use it again. It's just exciting for me. After I've worked it, there'll be really thin spots for, on a cup and then a real thick spot down by the stem because the glass is cooling at different rates when it's thick and thin. I need to go in the oven. When you put things in the annealing oven, they heat up all the molecules evenly and it cools them all back down. So it heats up 565 degrees centigrade and hold it for around 15 to 20 minutes to allow everything to equalize. And then you can cool back down through the 490 temperature range, the strain point. My annealing oven, that process usually takes about an hour, hour and a half to get up to temperature and then about another two or three hours to cool down depending on your oven. If you have a brick oven, it will hold the heat longer. If you have a fiber frax oven, it will cool a lot faster. I have one that's fire brick, so it holds the heat longer and it's more of a, a ramp down cooling versus a shelf drop off cooling. You have scientific glass, which is used in research chemistry but yet nobody's ever brought that same material into a bar, glassware, decanter type of scene. You have very distinctive lines between the glass you see in a bar and the glass you see in a research lab. Why can't it all be together? 